let's talk about gender. So we had about 10 minutes of meeting you. I loved you. I was just like, you said something about men and really seemed to get men in a way that's incredibly rare. Mm. And as a man, I very quickly, when we met like in the street in Berlin and then we, you know, we went for lunch and, you know, introduced as a friend of a friend, I, I very, within 10 minutes, just had this huge sense of trust in you. Mm. I felt really seen as a man. And it was wonderful. And simultaneously, I felt sad at how rare that is, mm. especially yeah. in Berlin, but I mean, all over the world. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this woman likes men and understands men. Mm. And I, you know, I can imagine someone coming out of a history of being a sex worker with the opposite. Yeah. You know, sending men and hating men. Yeah. You were kind of famous for doing this video. Uh, is the name From Women to Men? And From it, Women to Men, exactly. I participated, but a friend of mine created it. A friend of yours created it, yes. yeah. And, and it was when women saying, t I mean, maybe you could say what was in that video as a starting point to this, this part of the conversation. It was mainly... Uh, something like 40 women standing in front of the camera speaking to men in their life and in general owning the female shadow of manipulating men lying at men contempting them um don't not taking them serious or on the same eye level and it's something that i think went viral because it was some kind of unconscious collective yeah, blind spot. Just something that so many women do not have to look at in the feminist narrative that is around men are the perpetrators and we are the victims and men are the bad ones and we are the good ones. And the truth is, I do not want to have to decide who is the good one. We are all bad. So let's come from there. And then we have eye level on another level than this silly competition, who is the good sex and who is the bad sex. Right. And when I learned one thing about men in prostitution and after that, etc., it is the amount of sexual and social self-mistrust of men is it's such an amount of suffering and it's such an amount of blind spot for everybody. It's like, who am I not being full of love and empathy with myself as a woman in a patriarchal system and as a man as well? Because there are only losers in this kind of violent structural game. Let me, let me just play a very few, a short clip of it just so people can yeah. be reminded because if 200,000 views, people have probably seen this already. Yeah. I am a woman. I am a woman. I am a woman who has been hurt by men. Our wounds need to be seen and to be healed. I am a woman who has hurt men. So, so I'm going to pause it there because I'm not sure about legalities and other things here. But that was the key change as I've been hurt by men was already on the agenda with me too. And that was a great thing and really necessary. And then the video says, I have hurt men. Yes. And I'm owning that there's a you know, manipulation or female shadow. And yeah. I think it was ahead of its time because I, yeah. I t tried to talk about female shadow a couple of years ago and my head almost got bitten off. Yeah. I tried to talk about it six months ago and people were ready to listen. It was mm -hmm. almost like recently, you know, Harvey Weinstein got convicted and I kind of went, okay, is there now a stage now where we can talk about both shadows? We can talk yeah. about explicit male violence and maybe more implicit female violence. Yeah. Like I also yeah. went through a stage where my status and kind of micro fame had increased. And all of a sudden I was getting hit with all this feminine violence, mm -hmm. manipulation and lies and all this sort of stuff. And I had no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. I really felt powerlessness. Like I'd trained my whole life in male violence. I'm good at martial arts. I'm good at I'm arguing. You know, I'm good with money. I'm good with like straightforward linear power. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was getting hit by rumors and lies and secrets and i was like i had no idea what to do and i really yeah. studied it the last two years and i yeah. wonder if things have shifted with this crisis um what do you think with the crisis around gender or the crisis around corona what are you referring to well, I, how they interact i'm interested in now because mm. i see the gender conversation shifted yeah and yeah. that in, in, in a way that actually i'm pleased by it originally it was mm. I think a couple of years ago, it was just a very few lead edge women like you that I would have that feeling of being okay around. 
just okay as a man. Like, wow, I'm allowed to be a guy. Wow, that's so refreshing. And it really was a small percentage of women, small. And a lot think they have that, but I don't feel that around a lot. Yeah. And now I see that percentage increasing, which is a mm-hmm. hell of a relief if you're a kind of young male like me. Yeah. It's a hell of a relief. And also I wonder if some of the sort of gender wars bullshit will drop away. And to be clear, I don't mean, you know, real serious issues like sex trafficking. Yeah. I mean, people getting upset with each other over stupid shit. Like, I wonder if that will drop away a little bit. Now we're in this collective, um, mm. uh, you know, we have this collective enemy, the virus. Yeah. You yeah. I mean? It's interesting. I think there is a link between the gender discussion and gender scene and atmosphere and the Corona crisis, because again, it comes to, we have to let go of made up problems and projections that are not truly present right here or needed right here, right now, because we need our true energy and our kind of loyalty in the jungle in order to get through these truly challenging times. So there is something of, can we afford any longer to beat each other up with the competition who is right and who is wrong? And at the same time, I hope that all those gender fragmented scenes are still active and that there are more scenes coming up, adding them. Because I look as mankind and also the gender discussion like it's a global nervous system and it needs every frequency. We need men who stand up against domestic violence from their girlfriends against them. Because this is truly a statistic that is very real and nobody dares to talk about it. And we need people who stand up against domestic violence against women. Again, it's not about anybody of us who would not have a shadow. It's like, you know, in the moment, Mark, I'm only agreeing to talk to you when you are a saint. I will never talk to you. And as long as I need for myself as a woman suppressing my shadow, it's better not to talk to me because I'm immature around the heritage that I come from as a nervous system in a culture, having to deal with stuff Mm -hmm. and projections. Mm -hmm. You are wounded, I'm wounded. Can we stop faking, faking on another level than sex, that we are somehow through? Nobody is through, nobody is good. And it's dangerous, dangerous. We can meet each other, and then we can see everybody in the collective mess manages a heroic job to get through Uh, you know what i mostly see with men and women even through the heart of the gender war which before it turned and still hasn't turned that much was just men and women doing their best you know most of the time men and women who were were wounded and were trying to get on with each other and how do you enter a relationship when it's like i've been hurt so many times by so many men or so many women and yet the bravery and the courage to say and I'm going to open my heart to someone else because hey maybe there's a good man out there or a good woman that I can be with and it's going to be okay like that's a huge courage and also want to reinforce what you said about not denying the shadow makes you more dangerous like any man who doesn't know he's a potential killer dangerous yeah. dangerous what a threat you know any and woman what who what can't use her skills her emotional intelligence and her social skills to manipulate and hurt and get revenge dangerous exactly and i'm around those people we are killer machines being trained in the jungle for millions of years it's dangerous to lie at that and to be honest it's superficial and arrogant and immature it's childish and there's all there's something i want to come back to this feeling i had when i met you of being seen or being allowed even and it was like oh my god i can it was almost like i can be friends with this person mm-hmm. i can and also like i can do business with this person as well it's like we're actually business partners now right yeah. like around the conference and other things and it's it was a feeling of of like i don't want to say safety because that word's so overused but it was yeah what's the female perspective on that like is there a feeling of like hey i'm with a guy here who maybe gets his own shadow or understands women a bit more like how does that feel from the other side because for me, it was such a rare, f- I think because I was in Berlin, I hadn't had it in a few days. It particularly, Berlin, mm. by the way, is the place in the world where I feel least allowed as a man. 
Interesting, so interesting. I do not know how it started. I think writing the book about my time as a prostitute gave me those two years of writing for digesting deeper and zooming more into mm. what were the narratives and motives underneath. And for example, what I discovered about clients in general or many clients in many brothels all over the world, they do not come into a brothel in order to be the sex monster and the dark soul that they are in reality. They come into a brothel in order to feel safe with wanting emotional honesty and intimacy with a woman. Like men hide from society their emotional needs or their needs mm -hmm. for being touched and their needs for being met as humans. Mm -hmm. So it's like the, there is such a range of shadows. And when we look under the surface of, oh, this is sex or this is a penis or this is whatever, if we look under these packages for those charges then we see mammals being designed for meeting each other and supporting each other in a jungle and then being traumatized fragmented and taught to only function in roles and especially the male trauma around functioning is deeply contempting of men it doesn't protect anybody so can you say more about this contempt of men because I, I know a lot of men rights men's rights guys who notice this and for example if you watch any advert nearly all advertisements on British TV show men as either childlike and in need of mothering yeah. um, or bad. So they're either yeah. bad or they're, and you'll see this in Hollywood as well. Like all the latest Star Wars films have these archetypes of the men who are kind of incompetent and a bit stupid who need to be mothered um, or that they're evil. And it's like, wow, so either you're a little boy or you're evil. That, that doesn't sound like great options. Exactly. There is no space for breathing and no space for individual masculinity. And I think where men come from is a kind of castration and also the kind of narrative of the culture because you have a penis, you are a potential threat. And people around you are afraid because you are a man. So this makes you as a man being trapped in an inescapable dilemma because due to biology you are a problem so how do you try to cope with that you hate yourself you hide yourself from yourself and from everybody around and then not being manly enough that is such a inescapable violence being put into male bodies and there is uh, like a tragic vicious circle of women not feeling safe around men in patriarchal systems. So they as mothers and other women try to, um, to, to keep men down. Like they don't trust the beauty and the supportive character of true male independence and freedom and power and love. So they try to castrate men. And this kind of unfreedom of I shrink for you and you shrink for me, let's call that this let's say that this is intimacy no let me just jump in there because i think what you just said was brilliant so if you don't trust that masculinity can be good and noble and safe of course you'll castrate men of course you'll try and get rid of it of course of course and that's a vicious circle because men are deeply traumatized by for example their mother who did her best and still she grew up in a culture devaluating her as a woman so who is she feeling safe around a man so she tries to castrate her son and keep him down and then later on he wonders why he thinks that he's not worthy of love and freedom at the same time and especially the split in order to meet a woman you have to hide that you want to be free Alan, how do we get past the gender pain so what I really hear, for example, if I bring any of these things up, which is a strong evidence base for very logical, you know, and, and it's obvious when you watch TV, it's obvious when you look at the statistics. But yeah. when I bring this up to a lot of women, they just immediately, there's so much pain. They immediately kick back to, yeah, but what yes. about us? And what about, you know, didn't you know that men are the most dangerous thing to women on the planet? Did you know the statistics for rape? Yeah. Do you know? And I know that stuff. Like I've read that stuff and I know it personally. I've sat with friends crying who have been raped. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not blind to that side of things. And I'm sexually traumatized myself by men. So just to make sure this is not about me talking here as a white privileged girl who didn't see hell. Right. Didn't see trauma. That's important. People know 
how do we get to a point where, and as men as well, when a woman says to us, hey, did you know that sexual violence against women is much higher than against men, which is still the case, yeah. but it's much more sexual violence against men than is reported, yeah. you know, but it still seems massively more the case. And you'd expect that given physical size differences yeah. that people don't admit, admit, but you know, just that you would expect that. And how do we as men hear that without going, yeah, but, but what about men? But did you know about divorce and all my friends that have lost all their money and all their friends that can't see their kids because of the blah, blah, blah there's just like the feminists and the men's rights people like an empathy collision yeah and even the less extreme people have a bit of that it's very hard for people to s yeah. stop and listen to the other point of view so coming from collective trauma research background etc mm. i think or i see we have only one option left and that is accepting all together that the problem is way bigger than we thought we are still playing the kindergarten level of i'm traumatized so there is somebody else out out there who just traumatized me and is not traumatized him or herself and this is why we have yes but my pain is bigger than your one know what my pain is an ocean and it's as big as your ocean. And I have to heal in a matrix that makes space for two oceans. And if it takes that, 7.6 billion oceans of pain. This is a lot. We come from 6,000 years of traumatizing everybody, every human nervous system in this culture. There is no way around. It's just silly saying that only women would be traumatized. And if women now listen to my words or your words or whatever and feel that they have to decide, let's have empathy with the boys instead of the girls. No, let's have empathy with the boys and the girls and all those other sexes that are also traumatized by our culture, not allowing them to have any other kind of sex. That's all like it's a bunch of expressions of structural violence against trusting human nature, being powerful, free and loving at the same time. Nice. It's nice. Not reflecting on the level of gender as well, but it's reflecting on every level. If you do not force people to work, they wouldn't work. That's not true. That's just not true. Yeah, I've been Give working for the last two weeks. No one's forced me to. <laughs> it's just like all the projects I've been doing the last couple of weeks. Um, Women are good beings. They are good beings when it comes to sex. They are good pe beings when they have vulvas. They are good beings when they have penises. They are good beings when it's about to work or to sleep or to whatever. We studied the jungle. We know how to self-regulate as a mankind nervous system. So... I agree with you on that. You know, a hundred trainers just volunteered to teach free sessions for doctors exactly, and nurses. Yeah. Someone said, you'll never get enough trainers. And I said, we'll mm -hmm. get enough trainers. I sent an email out, a hundred emails yeah. right back. Within two days, a hundred emails. You know, it we only need another few. It feels better to support at the end of the day then to be supported once we get out of the survival burnout level of i need support otherwise i will just collapse right right it's when people easy. have got the basics covered they start trying to help other people very easy. i've seen this with disabled children i've seen this with you know with special mm. needs people like very natural urge to help other people once your basic needs are met for yourself and yeah. you're not in not in that terror of fight flight mm.